All right, folks. I have installed my new pick rail on my AR-15's bottom handguard, and it looks pretty good. A bonus was is that the washers that it came with actually managed to fit in my uh, AR-15 standard air hole vents at the bottom so I didn't have to resort to using bigger washers out here in the garage but we have plenty of them in case we needed to we have like a whole we have a whole metal chest full of them it's one of these uh, one of these uh, chests here we have a ton of washers in one of them but anyway I am happy to see that it worked that I didn't have to uh, put no uh, washers in on it and just look how beefy the inside of one of these DPMS Oracle handguards are all them ribs and big plastic ribs all the way up through there and you can see some spots where paint came through like right there and there yeah and some green yeah so it uh, paint did come through on them as I thought they and figured they were or would as you can see the paint job like I said when I painted my AR-15 like all the spots where I grab the AR like right in here and like up here on the handguard of course you know like right here all that's gonna wear off eventually and I'll eventually let's see some wearing off back here on the buttstock let me lift it up I think on the other sides even worse yeah it is right there yeah so I'm gonna eventually have to repaint my AR-15 like I did my M1A stock but I will let this paint job sit for a year, year or two more simply because it's the whole firearm so I got the new pick rail installed now my big question is is if I shoot it a lot because you know this these ribs right here see like right here like right in here where they're like they're lower than these and these are all up here that's where that barrel rides see that's where the barrel rides on them ribs right there like them ribs go around that barrel like that so it makes me wonder if heat will uh, you know sink into that pick rail a lot easier um, you know if I do rapid shots and stuff and it makes me well I'm probably going to end up having to get them little plastic rail covers that you put on it you know you just slip on over uh, so that way you don't burn your hand because you know some days some days uh, I don't have gloves on me to uh, you know while I'm shooting and I don't want to uh, burn my hand some of the paint on the rail came off right there my next step you know I get some plastic rail covers probably get some that match the camo uh, but my next step is to get a Picatinny uh, rail, a uh, sling adapter that would fit like right here and have like a one of these D rings like this and it uh, will hang because that's what my AR-15 needs the most. It needs a it needs a sling point to where you can bring a sling from point A to point B on the rifle, and uh, you know throw it over on your shoulder when you need your hands, so that way you're not uh, constantly needing to find a place to lean your AR-15 up, and you could uh, you know just put it on your shoulder and not have to worry about leaning it up against a tree or it falling down a ravine because you lent it up against something the wrong way and it goes tumbling because uh, that would be bad 
That way you can keep your rifle, or basically just to keep my, my rifle on my person. And I have to continuously, like, you know, say if I drop something or uh, I needed both my hands for another task out in the woods, I wouldn't have to constantly, you know, be setting my AR down. I could throw it on my back like I do my M1A when I need to uh, do other things. Because, like, last year, when, like, for example, when we killed that buck, we got up there, I had to drag my... Uh, buck back down the hill because we killed it up on a hill and if I didn't have my sling for my M1A that would have got uh, old real fast having to set the M1A down and then drag it a few feet and then go back and get my M1A and then you know set it down a little bit further in front of me and drag the deer back so that's where a sling comes in handy because you can just throw your rifle up on your back and you know not have to keep setting it down on the ground well, anyway, it's been Pluskin by 51 millimeter. I gotta go put the handguard back on my rifle. That was a bit of a pain in the ass because this Delta ring here, I believe that is what it's called, is a stiff mofo. Depressing that was a pain in the ass. And how I ended up having to do it was have my dad pull that down as hard as he could and I took a screwdriver and put the screwdriver through one of these vent holes and just pried that back. It was uh, I need to get that tool that lets you it looks like a tuning fork it goes like down beside it and you just you know bend the tool a little bit and it depresses that for you. That might be my next purchase because this won't be the only AR-15 I ever buy and I'm sure if I want to uh, switch hand guards and stuff on rifles in the future I, I'll need a easier way to do it because that delta ring is it's pretty tough it's uh they got a good spring in that well anyway this has been Pluskin by 51 millimeter it's getting hot out here in this garage see you all in the next video and uh, hopefully I'll have a sling a uh, sling adapter up there on the front for it here before you know it anyway this has been Pluskin by 51 millimeter Got a few more range videos to upload. Those should be up uh, after I upload this one. I'll see you all in the next video.